What's up, everyone? What's up, Mike? What's up, dude? How are you? The real estate marketing dude. What's yes, up, buddy? Sir. I'll, see you, I'll see you everywhere, man. I'll see you everywhere. I thought I see you. That's because so, I'm retargeting you, bro. Quit clicking on my website, engaging on my shit. I'm, I'm spying on you, dude. That's what I'm <laughs> watch. I watch everything you do. You know, it's funny because like sometimes your vid, your stuff like in the background, it's like there's there's like these moving things, and I don't know if it's like a trick or something that you do, but I'm mesmerized. I'm like I'm just I'm watching. The next thing you know, I'm hypnotized, and before you know it, I'm clicking, and well, I'm buying your stuff, buddy. Well, it's about attention, folks. That's what we're going to get into today. We're not talking about lead generation. Um, this is all attention-based, and what we're going to get into today is really just sort of how do you multi-purpose your content. Now, the reason when we're talking about multi-purposing is like what Kevin, a lot of people are doing is they're just creating a video and then they're letting it die in the news feed. And if that's what you're doing, it's better than doing nothing, but you're not maximizing what you're doing. And content creation is modern-day marketing, folks. There's been a huge paradigm shift what's going on within uh, the business. So I want to first start off by defining what we mean by content. What is it? Folks, it's everything we freaking do. We live in the most content rich business that you can imagine. There's a whole television station dedicated to our profession called HGTV. And I know you've watched it. So why do we, um, when we're creating content, I think the biggest problem a lot of people have is what do I create? How do I create it? And what do I say? Right. Um, Content creation, when you're building a brand, isn't so much about telling people what you do as much as it is about reminding them what you do, folks, and staying in front of them and nurturing them through ongoing content um, creation. So if you think about it, regardless of the type of videos that you're creating in your marketplace, all of them are going, should accomplish the same goal. It's a giant, don't forget I exist, don't forget I exist. Hey, by the way, I'm still in real estate, or by the way, I'm still in, in lending. And any type of local community video you do is going to accomplish that goal. The difference between marketing and advertising is night and day. Marketing is don't forget I exist. Advertising is, hey, I need a lead right now, take action. And the truth is we should probably be doing a little bit of both of them. But the main reason why we're creating content is to build our personal brands, period. The only way you build your personal brand is through consistent communication to the same audience over time. The only reason I have a podcast is for that reason. Kevin, if I stopped my podcast, I would stop demos. My podcast is just a different form of media. It's audio, right? So what we're talking about is the exact same thing, content creation. And content, folks, is modern day marketing. If you don't have content, how do you market your business today? Kevin, how is, uh, is cold calling still working? Uh, do you want me to say the answer that's real or do you want me to say the answer that <laughs> I want you to tell me the truth. Cold calling it is not as effective as it once was, but I still think it works. Yeah, I do. I do. Totally works. Yeah. But how long can the average person do it? Depends on the person. Most people don't. Most people, most people don't do it. Most people don't enjoy it. Uh, it takes a certain type of person that will sit there and, and pound out a bunch of calls. So right. not, not a lot of people like to do it. That's, that's, I'll but it's, pro that. it's prospecting. Right. right. And content creation has nothing to do with prospecting. So I'm not ask, asking for business. I'm not creating content to create an immediate deal per se. Right. Like typically on, on cold calling, that's a totally different option. It's a totally but, but different here, way to go about it. Here's the thing though, Mike, we do both. So I'm, I'm a big prospector. Totally. Right. I'm big on grinding it out, making calls and that kind of thing. So where I've seen my business really taken to another level is where I've combined the prospecting which you already know where I'm going with this mm -hmm. is, and we talk about it all the time. I combine the prospecting with the branding, yes. the marketing, the repurposing of content, the retargeting. So the before, so what ends up happening a lot of times, those conversations, I've talked to people that say they've seen my, my content. Yes. And then what we do is we'll even start focusing on those people that are engaging with the content that I'm putting out. And so that makes the conversation even better. So it's not really cold calling. And then correct. here's where it gets really cool, where it gets really exciting is I'm putting, I'm making calls, right? But I put out content and where it gets really exciting is I don't have to make as many calls anymore because guess what happens? They start calling me. Right. And that's where it's like, wow. You're, you're exactly right. The content that we create helps convert the leads we're chasing. 
And content, because it creates conversations, it's no different. Kevin, if I called you up tomorrow and I'm like, hey, bro, I need to borrow $50,000, you're less likely to give it to me than when you see five ads of me all over the internet. Yeah. I mean, right? It's because it, people give into the one they see the most. People give but it in. humanizes the brand. And content creation is that, folks. What we're going to get you talking about is multi-purposing the content so that when you're making your sales messages, people are like, who the hell is this Kevin guy? Do I trust this dude or not? And the video of Kevin sitting there with his family and his kids is going to do better for conversion than the video of Kevin sitting there talking about damn interest rates nine times out of 10. So, so think about it as a human um, connection. Go ahead, Kevin. Um, no, you got my point. So go ahead. You go. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it. So think of this as like long term, you guys. Uh, and just let's, let's put it this way. In the eyes of the public, this goes right to the point you're making. In the eyes of the public, who is more qualified to sell a house? The agent that's got a full YouTube page, ton of articles on their website. They have a seller education center on their website, a buyer education center on their website. They have a ton of content on businesses, local communities, neighborhoods. And you see them everywhere all the time. Is that person more qualified to sell a house than the one that has none of that? Well, in the eyes of the public, it is. Right. And it's no differently than why people make vacation choices. Like nobody goes on Travelocity and books the hotel that has zero reviews. Nobody hires the agent and calls them off their site that doesn't have any content either. And that's what attraction is. So yeah, you're right. It, it's very powerful. So when we're talking about why we're creating content, it's a, it's a two prong approach and it can be used in a lot of different um, ways. But yeah, go ahead, Kev. Two, two quick things on that. This is what I was going to say. You mentioned it. You, talk, you touched on it real quick, but it's, I think it's very important. People give in to the person that they see the most. People give in to the person that they see the most. Yep. So if I'm out there putting my content out over and over and over again, whatever my message is, people are gonna give in to the person that they see the most. So I wanna be seen the most. It's a fact, right? Like it's like studies have been put forth regarding this. Yep. And so um, that's a big, that's a big, that big. So that's something to definitely keep in mind and when you're putting content out. And here's the other part is a lot of the videos that, that I put out, I might not have a ton of views, okay? But what, to your point, perception is everything. If you have a bunch of videos out on YouTube, do you think your client is gonna look at every single one of those? No. Nope. Are they, gonna, they, might, they might skim through, just like we skim through reviews on Yelp. Am I gonna read every single review? Nope. No. But when I go and I Google that, prop, that restaurant or whatever, and I see that it's got a thousand reviews and most it's four stars or more. I'm going to, I'm going to take that as credibility. I don't even need to read the, re read the reviews. So it's 100%. Like, That's exactly people. right. So my thing is like, I'm, even if I don't hardly have any views, that's okay. It's about having the content out there. So when people go and they see, wow, this person's got a ton of YouTube videos. This person's everywhere on, on the internet. It's like going into a library. I go into a library. I'm not going to read every book. Yeah. But if I go into a library and it's empty, that's not even, it's like, I'm not going to, the credibility is gone. So those of us that are, it's simple. Like what you do, man, you just, you just put so much content out that it's like, I can't avoid you. Good. You know I mean? <laughs> I <can't avoid> you. <laughs> that's the goal. And here's the thing, like people always are stuck, like, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Everyone worries so much about how we're saying it. And the truth is that people are going to retain 10% of what comes out of your mouth. People don't listen to what you say. They're, they listen to how you say it. People don't remember what you do. They remember how you do it. And that's what a lot of what content creation really is. Um, the video you guys are watching right here is just on a point of interest of a place in San Diego. And it has nothing to do with real estate. But the truth is, is that unless she was a real estate agent, um, it's building her brand without her having to tell everyone she's a real estate agent. She's showing that she's a real estate agent because all a real estate agent is, is a um, community expert, local advocate. So one of the styles of videos you guys can do are community videos, neighborhood tours, business interviews, local points of interest, local events that are going on in the community. All a real estate agent is, is a tour guide um, for content and, or for their community. And you just have to become an advocate of it. Uh, so community videos are one style of video. Um, My, a lot of people ask, go ahead, Kev. Man, I'm going to interrupt you. Go ahead, finish. I'm going to tell you something after this. Go. A lot of people ask me about what about transactional videos? Well, if you guys aren't doing listing videos, I think that's just like a no brainer. Like if you have a listing 
do a video on it. People are expecting us um, to do it. The video you're looking at right here is sort of a, a spoof. It got like 10,000 views because it was different and because we put a story into the actual video and the content creation. This is a $1.8 million house, something like that. And what we did on the video, it was uh, dad falls asleep on the couch, kids come on in and they throw a party while I'm passed out on the couch. And it's a party with all the little kids, Sam's kids, my kids, Oliver's kids, Evan's kids, all of our friends' kids. And we're just mm -hmm. having a blast with it. But this video was different, folks. I wasn't focused on selling the house. I was focused on generating the attention. I don't do listing videos to sell the damn house. I do them to sell my damn brand. And there's a major difference with that because what people remember is how you do business. Um, another really good transactional video that I would encourage everyone to do are case studies. Quit posting just listed, just sold. People don't care about how many houses you sold or how much damn money you made, especially with COVID. What they do actually care about is the people you serve, the people you help. Um, there are HGTV's entire channels dedicated to case studies. That's all this is. This is a real estate investor that just stole a house from somebody. And the lady's thanking her for stealing it from them because she saved them. This is a big, bad, evil real estate investor. But because she's telling a story, she's humanizing her brand through content creation. And no longer is she like this big, bad, evil investor because she's demonstrating how she helps people and how her value app opportunity helps people. Again, this is just a story that reminds people that she's in real estate. In this case, it's a um, investor um, type. Um, Kevin, what were you going to say? What I was going to say is, again, something you touched on. But the biggest challenge, two things I see. You, you're big on video, and you're, you know, you're very active. And you get people to, to really do video, man. And I feel like a lot of us agents... We're not comfortable. It's not something that we're used to doing. We didn't get into the business thinking I'm going to do a bunch of video for the most part. So, and if I don't know what to talk about, I'm already, I'm already uncomfortable. So if I don't know what to, what to talk about, it's even more challenging. Sure. So tell us about, so, so then the challenge is, okay, what do I talk about? How do I get the content? What do I talk about? Do people care? So tell us about answerthepublic.com. So um, people are like, what kind of content to talk about? What you're really saying is how to communicate it, which has everything to do with your personal brand. There's no shortage of content out there. Um, you're talking about keyword research. I'm going to cover that when we get to YouTube, just so okay. we go into that in more depth. But um, it's more important with how you present your content than what you present your content on. Okay, folks, because people remember how you do it, not what you say. The way communication happens, 90% of it's going to be through verbal uh, or through tonality and body language that you're using. People will only retain 10% that comes out of your mouth. So I don't care what you're talking about. I care how you're saying it. Short answer, Kevin, um, without with my shameless plug is I have every script in the world. I have over 100 different scripts. So we don't run out of things to say. But regardless of that, all of these scripts are just on the stuff that I'm showing you. Um, so another type of style video, buyer seller content, um, the buyer process. I think every agent should have a virtual buyer seller education center. Everyone should have virtual presentations. Like what content on your site demonstrates that you guys are good at what you do. That's what it comes down to. When you, when we go to hire, um, a dentist and let's just put it this way, you, you're going to go look at a dentist. There's three dentists and you just moved into a brand new neighborhood. Which one do you go to? The one that has there's, you visit three different websites, one website, is uh, just like, there's only one page. It says, hey, we're ABC Dentist, come see us out. We've been here for 20 years, great. Website number two has, okay, great. This is a, a couple different tips on keeping white teeth. All right, here's a couple different tips on doing this. And there's a little bit more content. But website number three has a full interactive tour. I'm able to meet the people that work at the dentist's office from the receptionist to the dentist himself. He has a full education center on his site teaching me about why he should be flossing every day, why he should be doing this, why he should be doing that. Well, in the eyes of the public, that dentist is a lot more, um, is better at what they do than the one who we don't know. Mm -hmm. So what I mean is that perception is really everything. And there's no shortage of content to create, you guys. There's just a shortage of how to say it. And it's really on how you would speak to anybody. When people, people get so scared on scripting, never before in the history of mankind is a little device had the power to make a grown man buckle at the knees, right? <laughs> and the, the question for that is, is why? 
Like, do you get nervous if I come in and I ask you, I'm coming in, I'm moving into Orange County, Kevin, I'm buying $3 million. I'm moving in from Chicago. When I come in and I ask you a question, Hey, can you tell me what the best schools are? You're not going to think twice about how to answer that question. But what's the difference because you're answering the same damn question when the camera's on? Nothing. Because of being, being fear of being judged. Nobody sees your videos unless you press the send button. That's all mindset. Yeah. People get so nervous about the filming of videos, but they realize that they're the ones who are actually controlling <laughs> the, uh, they're the ones who actually control who sees it. Therefore, shooting it, you should never be um, um, worried or nervous about it. So let's get into multi-purposing. Um, yeah. Get an idea why video and all of that. And we'll get into the YouTube and the website stuff. So there's two ways to multi-purpose your video content. One is I, I would call active distribution and two is multi-purposing distribution. So first thing I'm gonna do is, is talk about active distribution. This is the main reason why I create content. This is the main reason why our clients create content because all we want to do is create a giant, don't forget I exist campaign, right? When we look at where business really comes from in the real estate industry, this is NARS stats, not ours. Everything I'm showing you is not theory. It's factual. It's mathematical. Everything we're taking is with a mathematical approach, but you can look at these charts any which way you want. Um, it's how uh, somebody found a real estate agent as a seller, as a buyer, and what happened is that over 80% of transactions that close come from people you use in the past, you were referred to, or you personally met in front of an open house at a sign. It's about 82% of closed transactions comes from that. What that means is that they all come from relationships. So the number one goal of my content is to make sure everyone I know knows and sees them first and foremost, because that's where most of my business is coming from. So to answer the point we were talking about earlier, 10 to 15% of the people that will see your videos will be moving this year. It's a mathematical fact. That's not, there's nothing to be uh, talked about on that. But 100% of the people who see your videos have the ability to refer you. When a referral comes on top of mind, you have two seconds to either get introduced to the conversation or it's gone. The agent that's creating a ton of video consistently is more referable than the one who isn't. That's it. That's all this is. It's a giant popularity contest. So the reason why we want to put our content in front of uh, people is because what we want to do ultimately is do exactly what Bed Bath & Beyond does. Bed Bath & Beyond, Kevin has all these 20% off coupons sitting in his kitchen drawer right now. <laughs> they're just sitting there. But Kevin, when he goes to Bed Bath & Beyond, he never brings them to the damn store with him. Um, they're just farming him with direct mail because it's just one channel. When Kevin gets to the Bed Bath & Beyond store, he scans his email for the same damn 20% off coupon. And the only reason he knows about a 20% off coupon is because they keep direct mailing him the damn same damn coupon over time. And then when Kevin leaves the store, towels start following around the internet. That's why Bed Bath & Beyond asks him if they'd like to email his receipt. Always say no, unless you want to be retargeted. My mm -hmm. point, folks, is that they're everywhere all the time through different channels. Direct mail is a channel. Email is a channel. Social media is a channel. The people on the receiving end of these quote-unquote channels are the people you know, like, trust, and love. The agent who consistently communicates with them with content is more referable than the one who doesn't. We talk about video email. There's a question here. You want me to ask it? Yeah. Scott Taylor asks, what can I search Facebook for to find this on Facebook? I'm not sure if I understand that question completely. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Do a follow up on that if you don't mind. Yeah. Let me get into, um, I'm going to show you a video email. When you look at video email, a lot of people are like, what do you mean you don't have to talk about real estate? You don't have to talk about real estate. This is where branding is so important. This is a mortgage broker. He could be talking about cooking a peanut butter or making a peanut butter jelly sandwich in his damn kitchen, and he'd still be marketing his mortgage business as long as there's a visual reminder of his mortgage business. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much about what we're talking about or what the content is as much as it's reminding. There's a difference between branding and advertising. And when we're branding and we're marketing for referrals, all we're doing is splashing content to the people we know. Video email is just one component. If I'm sending my database two video emails a month, I'm more referable than when I'm not. That's it. Social media, same damn thing. On social, you guys know everybody on your, um, on your, um, everyone on your platforms are just future deals. Like you're not connected to strangers on social media. Um, the only reason I would have a business page if I'm a real estate agent is to run ads. If you're not running ads, you don't need a business page. In my opinion. I like that. Your database does not hang out on your business page. You're not that damn cool. None of us are. They hang out on your personal page. That's why when you post on your business page, the only one comedy is the, real, is the broker trying to recruit you, the mortgage broker trying to earn your business, and the title rep is trying to get your listings. Fair statement? <laughs> it happens. 
But look at the comments and the engagement. Um, this gal did a something about Mary. You could sort of, the video's hilarious, but you could see her hair is like all stuck up in the front of there. Well, she got 86 comments, eight shares. I'm fighting for attention. I'm not fighting for lead generation. The more attention I have, the more I'm going to attract because of the statistics I gave you earlier. Now, when you want to scale it, and if you want more attention, then you run ads. But run ads to the damn database. Don't run it to a bunch of strangers for referral marketing. You can upload your whole email list, your whole cell phone list right into Facebook. Hit the boost button. It's a custom audience. Don't worry about the ad um, special categories. Farm your damn database. Only about 15 to 20 people see your personal post. 80% of them are not. That's why you do it. We're not talking about sending out a million dollars a day either. We're talking about five bucks a day, 10 bucks a day. But it's the combination of all three of these, Kev, um, that makes it how people attract business. Someone who does this to their entire database is going to attract more business than someone who doesn't because you're just staying on top of mind with it. So that's what we would call active um, distribution. How many people do you see that create videos and don't distribute them? They're like, I created this. I had a guy call me yesterday. Mm. He spent $3,000 on two videos. Once he got done shooting the videos, nothing happened with them because no one saw them. You've got to distribute your content. Otherwise, there's no freaking point. Mm -hmm. um, let's get into what you're talking about, though. We're going to talk about long-term distribution. Um, let's talk about YouTube. Um, and this is why I want to go through the keyword research. So everyone wants to get into YouTube and all that. And you said something that was really important. Um, do you care about the views or the subscribers? Sharon calls those ego metrics, right? On Instagram. And I say the exact same thing because you're right. You don't always have to, the views and the subscribers and all that isn't always the end goal. A lot of that feeds your ego. It only takes a couple people to log on to a channel and find you and just call you. But you have to get your content found, right? So when you're multi-purposing your video content, you're SEOing it on YouTube. YouTube's a search engine. So when we look at a channel or we look at a, an agent that we're working with, the first thing we do is we figure out um, what the keyword research is in their market. And we're going to create content accordingly. And there's really two ways that you can go about doing this. The first image you see right here is a tool I use called vidIQ. vidIQ is a YouTube specific SEO search engine, essentially. It's keyword research for YouTube specifically. So what people type into YouTube and Google are two totally different things. A lot of people don't realize that. So what do people type into sites like YouTube? It's more visual, moving to, living in. This is nationwide. So for those of you who are in Hawaii, well, in Hawaii, 14,000 people type in moving to Hawaii a month. So it's a little competitive, but it's a combination of doing the keyword research. The other thing you can do is that YouTube will tell you what to create. Like if you start typing in moving to and look how they match up, YouTube's telling me what videos to create. Okay. So that's all we're doing. We're creating the stuff they're telling us that people search for. And YouTube always has these different suggestions. The point being is that if you want your content to be found, it has to be positioned on, on YouTube so that it can get found. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin mentioned another one, answer the public. Answer the public is a free tool that you can use that tells you what people type into Google and all of that. And really you want to look at a couple different sources to get a good idea on how you would SEO and optimize those different keywords, which is really, this is what optimization really is. So people are like, what does that mean? What do you optimize? So when you're uploading a video on YouTube, you're not just putting it in there and just pressing send. Doing that would be sort of like putting in a listing into the MLS without like telling us what zip code it's in. All right. That's a good analogy for you guys to look at. So we have to tell YouTube what the hell we want people to find. So the way you optimize your videos is you have to SEO them like your SEO in a blog post. Um, that's going to be in the title and that's going to be in the description. The keywords have to be in the title you want to show up for and they need to be sprinkled throughout the description as well. And then you need to add them in throughout the tags. So I could spend an hour talking on just this, but in short, there's a process that you want to multipurpose correctly. Um, when people look at their YouTube channel, the easiest way to get your head around it is treat it as a video book you're writing. If I were to write, make my YouTube channel, this is my channel, you start out, you have a trailer video, 
And then you have all these things called playlists, which are really like chapters of your book, right? So my channel is Real Estate Marketing Dude. We teach people all about branding, attraction, video marketing, referral marketing with video and all of that. So I have these different things called playlists, which are like chapters of my book, but they're categories. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If I want to rank all over moving to, I need to create a bunch of content that says moving to. Pros and cons of moving to Las Vegas in the summer, the cost of living in Las Vegas. Living in Las Vegas versus living in Summerlin. The top three family-friendly neighborhoods to move to in Las Vegas. Who's moving to Las Vegas? Moving to Las Vegas from California? Moving to Las Vegas, are you gonna buy or, or rent? You know, it's after I have a lot of content that YouTube can start looking at me like a, as more of an authority. But you're, um, you need to be consistent on it just like every other social media platform. And you need to start somewhere. My point being is that when you, I like, personally, I like building out tracks or playlists at a time. So if I'm an agent that's looking to play the YouTube game, I'm building my living in series first. Then I'm going to build in my moving to series. Then I'm going to build in my best neighborhood series. So with just a tiny bit of planning, it's not that difficult to figure out how to create it and really come up with a plan that'll have you create videos for one to two years. Does that make, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. How many videos should we be shooting? I mean, it's, I mean, we're talking about face, we're talking about YouTube right now, but for, for example, on, on Facebook. For branding, no more than one to two a month, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, but I mean, people, are you talking about professionally done or, or are you saying? Good question. Um, it's all based on perception and how you want your brand uh, to be perceived by. So he's asking like, what's the right answer? So I mean, I'll answer it two ways. Depends on what your goal is. If my goal is just to market my database, people come to me every day like, Mike, I want to do 10 videos a month. I'm like, bro, you're going to burn out. Like, why? Like, do you want to work hard? Or do you want to work smart? Because it's not so much about more content. It's about more impact. And I could easily just spend $5 a day on ads to get that same attention to my, for my database. So from a branding and database referral marketing perspective, no more than one to two videos a month because you're just farming. What about email? How many emails should we be sending? One to two a month, same concept. One to two a month, okay. One to two video emails a month. They have nothing to do with real estate. So nothing to do with real estate. What should we be talking about? Businesses, local community things. We've been doing a ton of coronavirus content. The last few weeks, people have been teaching people their superpowers from their kitchen. I made a video on how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I have a guy making a video on the best rib marinade you could possibly imagine. Um, it does not matter what you talk about when you're talking about building your personal brand. That's the beauty of it. Got it. Right? Like you're just All becoming, right. it's a giant popularity contest. And as long as I have my logo, like look behind me. What's mm. right behind me, Kevin? The yeah, attract and retain formula. Yeah. Your content, your info, your logo. So when you're doing your videos, as long as your logo is branded in them, it's doing its job, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I just have to stay relevant. That's the difference between branding and attraction. Now, if my goal though is to rank on YouTube, then yes, I need more content. See what I mean? Yeah. My point is well, that well, with YouTube, you're not as intimate, right? You're not in somebody's space, right? You're, you're, you're posting content on YouTube and then people can go and view it yep. as they please versus with an email, you're kind of invading someone's space. Yep. Um, and you have all the scripts, you have all the, the best performing videos, you have all that data. Mm -hmm. And all I have to do is reach out to you and, to get it, right? The best performing videos are the ones you do consistently, period. There's, I don't believe for referral marketing, there's a, this video is gonna do better than this one. The one that's gonna do better is the one that's the most vulnerable. People engage way more when you're way more human. So more personable, less professional for database, that is. Don't get me wrong. If I'm doing uh, lead generation type videos and I'm creating a sales script and I'm talking specifically to people over the age of 65 that have high equity in their homes and maybe are out-of-state homeowners, that's a little bit more specific. Hey, is that house starting to give you a little bit of headache? Maybe the house is too damn big. Or maybe you just don't like cutting the grass anymore. It's probably time to get into one of those communities that can do all this stuff for you. Well, one of the good news is, is that it's like I'm talking directly to them. Mm -hmm. So there's different styles of videos. But for the intents of this conversation, it's really how do you build a brand with it?
how do you multipurpose the content? Got it. So let's talk about your site. Um, the site, your website is your storefront. The agent that has no site on, no content on their site is just a salesperson. The agent that has a ton of content on their site is a brand. If your site is just an online business card, it's not there to connect. The only reason I create content is because people don't ask me if I'm good at what I do when they call me. They just ask me what I do and how I do it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. The agent that has, let's talk about how we, how we multipurpose a lot of the content um, on the site. Let's talk about real estate content first. Um, I believe everyone should have some sort of real estate content. Like, how do we not have content that demonstrates we're good at what we do? Do you know any business that does that, by the way? Do you know uh, any business that tries to market themselves online that doesn't demonstrate online what they do? Do I know any businesses that do that? Yeah. Not, not off the top of my head. I've never heard of one. So for agents, if you're listening, guys, if you want to start creating an online business, you need to have online content. That's what I'm getting at. Right. Because even if you get the lead, like what Kevin said is so important. Kevin's like prospecting. He's a freak of nature. Like the stuff that you do, I can never do because I still have the patience for it. And everyone has a different um, uh, skill set. Yours is obviously in prospecting and systems and all of that um, type of stuff. But the content you're creating is what's helping on the conversion because people get an idea that they check you out. Think about it. If you're, you're buying or you're selling your most important asset with somebody, if you've never met before, you just trust them instantly or do you, just, you want to sort of see how they roll? Of course, you're not going to trust them right away. That's all this is. It's a lot of the, the marketing and the content creation helps conversion. Right. Um, on my site for real estate content, I have, um, on my old site, I have uh, how to sell your house without an agent. Well, when I talk to a FISBO, that's what I would send them. Why am I going to try to talk them into listing with me? They're selling FISBO for a reason. Right? Mm -hmm. So give them a course. I have a course on my site. It says, here's how you sell your house without hiring me. And I show them all the stuff I do. Guess what happens? 82% of them fall. 82% of them what? FISBOs end up listing with an agent. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to be the one to show them how to do it on their own. Because who do you think they're going to think of first? Right. Right. Um, an expired listing. How many times you've come across an expired? I would send those people to a case study of a previous expired that I did. I'm like, so here's a house that was in the same situation you do. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in our call on Tuesday, but I thought you might like to read this ahead of time to know what I'm going to talk about. You know what's interesting about what you what you've built? You built, you've created so much content that you have the data to show to tell me what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So my thing for you is like, how do I get in your head to find hire, out what I should be doing? You, you whip out your credit card and you hire a dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a feeling, I, have, I have a feeling you were gonna say that. I have a feeling you were gonna say that. But no. Here, so watch this, watch this video here. I don't have sound on it, but presentation is everything, right? So this is something I'm really excited about. We started rolling out these virtual presentations and you could embed this presentation that I'm doing this on is Prezi, um, which is an online based cloud based presentation. But look at the video right here. I ended up building a bunch of uh, basically pre listing packets that describe my listing presentation. The Prezi is now interactive on my website. Mm -hmm. So if I want to do a virtual presentation with somebody, I'd be, all right, can go ahead and log on our site. I'm just going to do a Zoom call and I'm just going to go over my website with them and it's going to hop around just like what you're seeing right there. So a lot of time our presentation is positioning. People don't, re don't hire us for what the frick we do. They hire us for how we do it. This is another way to do it differently is my whole point. Yeah, and, and the other thing is people want to – they want to know who they're dealing with and it's just about making a human connection and more than ever now with COVID it's harder to get face to face with people and, and really communicate with them on a human level. Yep. And what this allows me to do when I say this, I'm talking about doing video and being out there is it allows other people to feel comfortable with me. Yes. And a lot of times, they've made a decision about me, whether it's good or bad. I'm hoping that it's good 
And by the time I either I talk to them and I reach out to them, which is what I usually do, because I'm looking at the data and I can see who's opening my stuff. I can see who's looking at my information. I can see who's sharing it. That's the other part of this that I think is very important is we can track and see who's engaging and who's taking action with the information that I'm putting out there. And then I'm reaching out to them. Or like I said earlier, they reach out to me and a decision has been made before we ever make that's exactly ever right. Talk, right so watch let me show you so here's i'm showing you a agent site right here she has probably about now she started creating content about 18 months ago that's her blog she's a local celebrity in ramona california everybody knows who the hell she is but she's been farming her whole community with a whopping 15,000 people which isn't a lot for facebook ads with content and the question here is like she's got four pages of blog content video on every page She's more approachable online right. for someone that hasn't met her. Right. I mean, look at all the content. They're like, fuck, well, this girl's got it going on. Well, she knows what she's doing. They, they watch, you know, people are going to watch what you do. And yeah. if you target your sphere, um, a lot of those people already know who you are. And then they're curious to see what you have to say. But yep. you just, it's, you stay top of mind. You yeah. know? And, and that's what it's all about is really creating a convenient decision with for a client with someone that they feel comfortable with yep. and, and i can do that with i'm gonna digitally, digitally right yes i'm gonna show you something new that's come out that i'm testing right now um interactive video again i'm always about standing differently so i just put this video on my website probably about two days ago and what it is is it's 100 percent and let me turn off the volume what is it? It's 100% interactive. So what this video says right here is, hey, welcome to Mike Quavos. I'm Mike Quavos, real estate marketing. You probably wonder what the hell is a real estate marketing. Well, we do two things. We help people build a brand and we do this, we do that. Uh, we could train you on how to do it or we could do it for you. Which option would you like? And it pops up like a choose your own adventure in terms of interactive video right here. So watch this will give me two options. Which one? Someone comes on right here. I would like information on training or I'd like information on your services. Great takes them into another video. So these are the three things that we do right here. That's cool. That's cool. So if I was a, if I was a listing agent, you can lead people in a different dire in different direction. Are you interested? Like, right. Like if it's a FISBO expired, what kind of a seller, you know, what's your situation? I, my home was listed and it previously expired. I need to sell my home in six months. I need to sell my home in six, correct. Six weeks. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's, this is like the type of stuff that's coming out. And like what a lot of us take for granted is that people assume every real estate agent, lender, or investor do the same thing, which is not true. We know that, but the general public doesn't. So when you can one up your competition and just do something just a little bit to sort of stand outside, you're winning. My thing is I don't want to press all the buttons, man. <laughs> I don't want to do all the work that it takes on the back end to create all this. Well, that's why you hire a real estate marketing dude, Kevin. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, <laughs> so well, how uh, let's, okay, let's so get some uh, Q&A if people have some, uh, if you want to check out Facebook, and then uh, we'll get this thing wrapped. Okay. But, um, well, there's a couple of questions here. Shoot. Um, for building out those playlists, I'm assuming on YouTube, how many videos are you aiming for in each category? Eight to 11, typically. Um, eight I, don't to know the, I don't know the right answer, that, to be honest with you. But I would say like eight to 11 is what I see other people do. Um, we had one guy that he's in Northwest Arkansas and he just started a, what we call a community informational series, which is really a YouTube strategy. He's only done three um, videos and they're moving to Northwest Arkansas, moving to Benton, Arkansas. They're all around the same heat terms. So he's only done three videos, but he's already gotten two buyers from it in about 60 days. Hmm. Now you don't know what's going to happen. Um, content creation is very hard to track. Fortunately, like, I don't know when yeah. people come to me on my site. I just know, I'm like, I always ask the question, like, how'd you find us? And they don't even know. They're like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I saw you in an ad or I can't, I'm on your podcast. And it's really similar content creation. You don't know what video or what piece of content they saw or where they were visited actually got them to pick up the phone and, and actually call you. So it's hard to uh, put an exact um, number on it. But the short answer is it's going to depend on three things your market, your keyword research, and your video, your content. If you have a really shitty video, 
what does that say about your brand? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So it's, it's perception and positioning um, a lot of time. Um, so if somebody wanted to talk to you, whip out their credit card and give you the digits, what exactly, <laughs> what, what, what exactly are you going to do for them? Um, I mean, we do two things. We are, our stuff is really simple. We either do it for you or we train you on how to do it. So people come to us in two shapes. We either build you a video series, we build you a brand, we build you virtual presentations, but ultimately we create content in the form of video and blog, any, anything you want and anywhere you want it. Um, a lot of people um, have their own videographers, so we train them because their videographers don't know what to do. So sometimes people hire us just to build them a series and then they take all of our scripts and they're off and running. Mm -hmm. So anything you want to do with content creation, you can do with us. Um, we just build it based upon your personal brand is what our expertise is. We figure okay. out a lot of times people are like, you ever see the apps? What superhero are you? Uh, yeah, I've seen those. I've seen those. So what video series is right for you is what we do. And we build a okay. series and a show based upon your personality. Oh, so that you're cool. excited about it. Not us. We want you to be a client in the long term. So therefore we have to make sure you're excited about it. And that's why we don't have clients. We have partners. That's fun. So you'll, you'll do a, you'll go through a series of questions and find out based upon my answers, what type of video series would be most effective for yeah, me. We go deeper than that. I'll go back to your childhood. <laughs> nice. Oh man. <laughs> you so, have to, when you're creating a brand, it's a long-term thing. So you have to be as excited about it as we are at the end of the day. So then the two options are you can build it out for me, do everything for me, press the buttons, create the content, do the videos, and I just have to show up. And then the other option is you teach me how to do it. So if I have my own staff, I have my own people, you'll yeah. show my whole team how to do, do it all. Yeah. We either shoot you how to show the live videos, we script, edit, and distribute them for you, or um, we'll direct you, script, edit, and distribute for them if we're shooting educational in front of like a green screen, per se. Okay. Um, here's, here's another question, and then of course we'll share all your information with everyone so that if anyone is interested, they can take action. Would you prefer to do professional walkthroughs or more personal walkthroughs yourself? Former being fewer, but higher quality or latter, which can be done more often. So which one do you think is better professionally done or yeah. personally done on your iPhone? The, in my opinion, the worst type of listing video you could do is the one that you're not in it. So I see that with agents so many times. We'll just, they'll have like 10 minutes of drone footage before they get in the front door. You never see the agent's face. So you want to do a combination of what you said that does both, in my opinion. One is the agent should always introduce the house and whether you're going to do a walkthrough or, or, or whatnot, um, I think you should be in the video literally showing me what the hell we're looking at because you're really building your brand on that. Um, if you're not in the video, you're, you're, you're paying for a video and you're not getting the whole point because you're not going to build your brand with it. No one sees you. So they don't associate your brand with the video. Second thing is, is that for a listing video, it should be quality. It's, it's a representation of how you're marketing a property. So if you do that half ass, what does that say about your marketing? Right. Listing videos is the one thing you can't change. You can't short change. And the reason for that is, is, uh, and I, I even tell our clients, like they may want to hire a professional videographer for a listing video because yeah. you have somebody else. It's a different type of, uh, of content. So I hope that, um, yeah, that answers. So yeah. I always go professional and personable on the walkthroughs on listings. Okay. And then, so, before we wrap up, how do we get a hold of you, man? I mean, I know how to get a hold of you because you're on my feed every freaking <laughs> everywhere I look. But um, if somebody's interested in learning more, what what do they do? Really simple. Uh, you guys can go visit realestatemarketingdude.com, realestatemarketingdude.com. My whole site is like a crash course. Visit the blog, download the podcast episodes. There's a ton of free content. I have a free course. Um, we have paid courses as well. And uh, we also have done free services. So we're a one-stop shop for video content creation, anything to build your personal brand, make you more popular and people don't forget who you are, what you do or how you do it. And there's a ton of really successful people that use your stuff. I know Sunit um, has been, been working with you guys for a long time. Um, who else that maybe someone could check out, you know, they may be familiar with or they might sure. want to check out some of their work. Um, there's a lot. Mel Parsons, yeah, Eric um, Eby. Um, there's people all over the country, but we'll send you guys a whole list of, of people. And my YouTube channel has a bunch of agents doing videos on them as well. So you go check out my YouTube channel at the real estate marketing dude. Uh, just search that on YouTube, subscribe, and then scroll down. You'll see a ton of different agent 
doing videos and they're all done differently because they all have different personalities. And what I really love about it, I mean, this allows, it gives us the opportunity to become really influential and, and really just become a, an authority within a specific group of people that we want to target. And you do it better than anyone that I know, man. And you do. now better than ever too, like with, with COVID people being home, I can't go out and shake hands. Networking events are non-existent. Like digital exposure is where it's at. And you've been, be. you've been at this game for such a long time that you just, I mean, you know, you've got the data. That's why, I mean, that's why you're doing it at such a high level. 10,000 views on that one video that you showed us. Um, you know, I just think if, like this is where I'm focusing. I'm focusing digitally more than ever. And we've been we've been focusing on digital for for many many years, but now it's like we're just going like just so much deeper with that. And one thing you don't want to hold back. And I know a lot of us have been you know market shifts and and you know uh, sales have 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 been reduced in some areas, and so we've had to scale back on some things, right, on expenses and certain parts of our business. But one area that I really do not want to mark, do not want to pull back on is marketing, branding, exposure. That's like, that's basically the lifeline of our business. And, and if you cut back on marketing, you know, it, it's, you're, you're almost, you're, you're basically putting, you're turning the oxygen off. You're turning, you're, you're taking the gas out of, yep. of the machine, you know? So um, that's one area that we're focusing on heavily. And I just I really appreciate you coming on, man. And, sharing this with us it's thanks been, for it's having been cool. me and um yeah if you guys have any questions feel free to message me on social um visit the site um, post on the blog we'll get right back to you and uh that's it hope we're able to bring some value and get you guys into it but don't overthink content creation it's modern day prospecting if you're going to do it in the form of video it's all about time blocking it and then multi-purposing it so people can actually see your content uh, it's an investment into your brand, folks. It's not a lead generation thing. At least the way I explained it today, it wasn't. It's a long-term play. Yes. Right on. Right on, Mike. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Till next time. See you later.